Hi everyone and welcome to part 4 in the Valkyrie Sound series on exploring and recreating the sound design of Alien Isolation. This video is quite long so I've decided to split it up into several parts. In each video we're going to take the sounds we made in parts 2 and 3 and add them to a scene from the Modular Sci-Fi Season 2 pack by Jonathan Frederick. It's free to download on the Epic Marketplace and I'll put a link in the description below. I'm going to be using this map which I've imported into the third person template. First we'll create an audio folder with four subfolders. Blueprints, cues, effects and WAVs. Then import your sounds by selecting them on your drive and dragging them into the WAVs folder. If you haven't created your own sounds you can use mine by downloading them from the link below. It's okay for you to use my sounds in any project you like but please give me credit if you do. A link to your project would be fantastic because it lets me see what you've created as well. Once you've imported your WAVs, select them all, Control and A, right click and create queue. Then drag all of your sound cues into the cues folder. So I'm using the third person character blueprint but I want this to be in first person. In the third person character blueprint, go to viewport, drag the spring arm so it's underneath the mesh and in the parent socket over here Click the search icon and type in head. That links it to the, the head bone. I'm going to set the spring arm length to zero and you're going to need to reposition and rotate the spring arm so that it's sitting in front of the mannequin. So I've got my camera set up like this. You can see that my character isn't moving around. That's because I've gone to the little drop down here in the top left and unticked real time. It's really difficult to be precise with your placement of the camera when the character is moving around all over the place. With the spring arm selected, under camera settings, tick use pawn control rotation and under lag, tick enable camera rotation lag and I've set the lag speed to 8. This is going to give us that similar view that we have in Alien Isolation and it also means that when we come to apply footsteps and clothing sounds to the character we can use the mannequin animations as our reference points. So this is really planning ahead for those future parts as well. Next, we'll create three audio arrays in the variable section. Go to the variable section, add variable. And I already have them here, but I'm going to show you how we get that. So with our variable added over in the top right, click on here and we go to sound queue. And it's object reference that we want. And we're going to change the like on here to the grid for the array and I've named mine audio array underscore environment. So I'm going to delete this example. For these two though, these aren't sound cue variables. These are sound bases. So for that, same process, add variable. But now we're going to go into this drop down and we're going to type in sound base and then object reference there. And again, it's going to be set as the grid or the array. So I've created two of those. One, audio array fandom footsteps, and the second, audio array thuds. So the environment array is going to be set up to hold the engine sounds, the base layer sounds for our, our game, and the phantom footsteps and the thuds will be in these two. Next, we're going to create an event dispatcher. So you just click on event dispatcher and create that in there. And I've named mine audio environment. We're going to be able to call that particular dispatcher from the level blueprint. And this allows us to make a communications connection basically between the level blueprint and the third person character blueprint. That means that we can specify a default engine home if the player doesn't automatically trigger one. That's going to be really useful for players starting the game inside a collision volume like ours is going to be. As they're already in the volume, they're not going to trigger any overlap event because the overlap only happens at the fringes at the edges of the collision volumes. So let's update the event graph. So first, we're going to create the engine home array from the content browser, go to audio and then cues and drag in all of the engine sounds that we have. Click and drag into the component section here. And as you can see, mine are already in here. Now with all of those selected in the details panel on the right, search details, put in auto and make sure that auto activate is unticked. This is going to stop the sounds from all playing as soon as we enter the game. Next, we need an event begin play node. 
And from that, we're going to run out a sequence node. From the first sequence pane, we're going to drag in our audio array environment and set. And into that, we're going to plug in the make array. I'm going to have to add a couple of pins to add in all of the sound cues that we have here so that they're all in order down here. Now I'm keeping this one, 006, as the default option, so I'm putting that in the note index. Next, we are adding a delay node. I'm not going to change the duration there. That's basically to allow the level blueprint to run through its executions related to this section before we call the dispatcher. So for the dispatcher, you can just click and drag that in here and click on call. It'll give you that node there. Hook those up as they're shown. And that's that part done. Now we're going to update the level blueprint. So compile and save. Go back to your main view and go to blueprints, open level blueprint. And here you can see the setup I've already got. From the event play node, we're going to pull out and cast to the third person character. The object is going to be get player character. From as third person character, I'm going to pull out and type in bind event to audio environment. Already got that in there, so we can delete that now. Then we're going to create a custom event. You do that by right clicking and typing in custom, add custom event, and I've named mine audio environment. Then I've connected the two red boxes here. And from the execution pane of the audio environment, I've added a for each loop. Out of the as third person character, I've gotten a reference to the audio array environment. So that's get, pull out here, type in get audio array environment, which would be that one. From there, I've plugged that into the input array of the for each loop. From the array element, I've added a play node, which I've also hooked up to the loop body execution pin of the for each loop. And also from the array element, I've added an adjust volume node, which is this one here. And I've set the adjust volume level to 0 0.001. Next, from the audio array environment, from that get node, I've dragged out and added a get array node. And I've left this input here as zero, which is going to match with the default entry that I have in the third person character. Remember the 006 engine hum. And then from that output node, I'm going to add another adjust volume, which is going to set that to one. So this first step basically says all of the elements in this audio array, the volumes are all going to be set to 0.001. And then instantly, we are going to get the first entry, index zero, and change that level to one, which is going to be the default sound that we play. Make sure I have all your execution pins in the right places. And then once you've set that up, you can compile, save that, and close it. But before we head back to the character blueprint, let's finish setting up the ambient base layer engine homes. We're going to do that by creating another blueprint. So back in our content browser, if we click on the blueprints folder, I've created a blueprint here. And this is an actor type that we get by right clicking in the browser, blueprint class, actor. And then we just need to open that up. So I'm going to open up the one that I've already made. This is our setup here. So first of all, I'm going to create a box collision, which is add component, scroll down to box collision. And with that selected, I've set the box extend to 500 for the X and Y and 250 for the Z, which is going to fill a fair enough space in our scene. Next, I'm going to create three variables. We've got an integer called select track. I'm going to leave that default to zero and I'm going to click the close die so that we can see this. That means that we can edit the parameter when we have the blueprint placed in our level without needing to go into each instance and create new versions of the blueprints. We can just use one blueprint and edit this particular par parameter as often as we like. Then we want to float variables, one I've called fade in and fade out, and I've set the default value for both of these to 1.5. Next, with the box collision selected, right click and add component on overlap. So you can go to add event collision, add component begin overlap. And we also want the add on component end overlap. 
like I've got here. From the begin overlap box, drag out from the other actor and type in equal equals to get the equal object. And then attach the lower node to the get player character. From the, the boolean, run out a branch and attach that to the execution pin here. Then we want to cast to the third person character, connect the object to the get player character node. From the third person character, we are going to call out the add audio array environment just as we did before with the level blueprint. So again, that was get audio array environment. From there, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to get um, an array node here. So you pull out, get a copy, and we're going to drag in the select track integer and plug that into the lowest value there on the, the get a copy node. We then drag out from the output and we want to add an adjust volume node, which is this one here. Connect those execution pins. And I've attached the fader node to the adjust volume duration. The volume level is going to be one. Scroll along a little bit further and we're going to add a branch. This is going to check to see if the sound that's already playing is the default value. If it isn't, then what we're going to do is set the default value, the note index entry, to a volume of 0.001. So we have a branch that comes out, the false entry attaches to another adjust volume node, and we've duplicated the get node, plugged that into the target, hooked that up to the same get audio array environment node over here, and we've added an equal equals node, which we've then hooked up to the condition entry for the branch, and we've left that at zero. Remember, that is the index that we are using for our default sound. And that takes care of the begin overlap section. Next, we're going to, all you need to do really is just copy these elements down here for the end overlap section. And you need to swap out the fade in parameter for the fade out one, and set the adjust volume level to 0.001. Once that's done, you compile, save, and we can close that. But if you press browse, we can then find that in the content browser and we can pull in the one we've just made there. And now, if we go into our map, we have the engine home sitting there nicely in the background. I've placed several of these in the, in the map. So they are here. And you can see I've just resized them to fit the space where I want the, the sound to be applied. If I go for this one, you can see that this is our select track option here, which we exposed earlier. Zero there for that one in the main room. This corridor here has two. That's got one. It's just going to add some variety as we move through the space. If I just quickly show you that. Here we have the number six sound. different kind of sound in here. Back to our 006 sound. So take some time just to place those around. Again, you can use the files I've linked down in the description below to add some variety to your own scene. Now, Alien Isolation seems to use several base layers rather than just one. There's nothing stopping you, of course, from creating multiple environmental ambient arrays to achieve a greater depth to your spaces. In a future video, we will look at layering sounds dynamically using some simple procedural generation features in Unreal Engine. That's the end of this part but the steps for adding sounds to our scene will continue in part five. Thanks for watching and as always, take care.